Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This is the show where I talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fiction or genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Midnight Texas. So a very good episode this week. Um, main antagonist that de- they were dealing with was a succubus. It is more continuation of like all the veil drawing more and more things in. Because it makes you wonder, like, it seems like... The hunger from the succubus was more like it's something that you know Joe and, and his um partner were talking about in this episode of like how like all the veil is getting stronger and it's making you know them like couldn't she couldn't the uh, succubus couldn't control her hunger so it's like is it just getting close to Midnight Texas I mean it seems like Midnight Texas is pulling the supernatural in so I think it kind of works in both ways it's pulling you in and making you more hungry but it's like it makes you wonder how would they like prior to midnight getting close to midnight were they able to control their hunger or not it's actually kind of interesting when you break it down like think about the fact is that lemuel is able to live in midnight texas and be able to keep his urges under control i mean granted he has his other way of feeding so i think that helps but we do see him kind of bring it up this episode that was kind of an interesting thing of like how he was like yeah his the bartender the bartender's like oh you want something to drink he's like oh yeah and you know i've take a sip and it's just like it's kind of hard it's a slippery slope so and you see him kind of checking out the bartender's neck uh so it's like it seems like there are kind of uh lasting effects for him drinking olivia's blood who knows how long it's been since i mean i don't know maybe drinking olivia's blood didn't necessarily affect him i would think so i would think that's like that's supposed to be showing the effect of that and i'll probably see something i will see as time goes on him struggling more and more with it especially maybe he could fight it for so long because he hadn't had blood in such a long time but now that he did plus this whole like veil situation it's probably going to make that harder going forward um i actually kind of feel bad for the um succubus because it seemed like in this episode kind of going back they didn't want to really they were like we can Lemuel himself is like i can help you you don't have to worry about this but it's like she had connor and everything so i also appreciate the fact that they can only be killed by dragon's breath it's like what why is that a thing like i mean i guess like the dragons and succubuses clash back in the day and um or something. I don't know. That was just kind of an interesting thing that it had to be dragon breath. Obviously, I guess the point is like if you can get fire hot enough, it, anything will work. But maybe that's the equivalency that you know it's from folklore and stuff like that. So maybe they kind of romanticize it a little bit. Like oh, the fire so strong it's like dragon's breath. I don't know. But this episode is also pushing forward that what we know about even further. Of like oh yeah, this universe is filled with tons and tons of supernaturals that we haven't even seen yet, which is no surprise. I mean, True Blood had quite a few like different type of supernaturals, but it seems like this show is going to have a long array of them. And an interesting thing to me too is it does seem like this episode might be setting up what Manfred is going to be doing for like what he does in Midnight Texas, and it's kind of what I was kind of bringing up in the first episode, except. Not necessarily, because I was thinking, like, oh, Manfred's going to be kind of like psychic detective. He works with the cops to help solve things. I mean, granted, both cops he kind of had a somewhat relationship with, uh, he was cool with, are both dead now, so there's that. But um, it seems like that might be worth, at the very least, helping people, kind of taking his practice and using using what his gift to help people. Obviously, like, anyone in around near midnight, obviously. So kind of keeping up his business, but a lot more legitimate like you know using it legitimately to help people which he has in the past sure but that was more so scamish which kind of talking along the same lines is the whole hightower situation because we hear manford talking about it. he's like yeah he needs this whole situation you know um getting paid you know at the end of the episode helps in the long run because he, of having to pay off hightower and it's like because he said, like, the way Hightower is talking about, like, putting my heart on a plate. And, I mean, like, he's like, Hightower wants to put my heart on a plate. It's like some, like, old school uh, way of handling the things. And it's like, he's like, yeah, Hightower wants his his pound of flesh. So it's like, is, is this just about money? Because man first got into thinking, like, it's not. So what exactly does Zelda do to piss Hightower off to the extent? That he, it doesn't seem like this is necessarily about money exactly. Maybe it's, a, it's an equivalently, um, an equivalent exchange in the sense of like it was something else, but he um, equated it to a certain amount of money. We don't, they've yet to actually tell like how much money Manfred actually owes him. Um, but it seems like it might have been something that Hightower wanted Zelda's help for, and Zelda screwed him out of it, either like left him holding the bag or something like, you know, in the terms of like a robbery. Not saying it was a robbery exactly, maybe it was, but nevertheless, um, it does seem like that was kind of the thing, so it, it's something like it's way be like maybe he's into some like deep 
uh, dark art supernatural stuff, and Zelda was supposed to help him, but she backed out and got, once again, screwed him over. Like, whatever the case may be, I'm very interested to find out, like, what that is all about for them. Also, another interesting thing, too, is, like, as we found out about Lemuel last episode, like, Zelda has some kick to her, so it's not just being able to see ghosts. Like, she, well, she had, like, it makes you wonder how far Manfred's powers can go, because, like, I, I didn't even think about it last episode, and I was like, oh, yeah, like, his grandma had a lot more kick to her, probably not just seeing ghosts, like, she has some spiritual powers, probably not as powerful as Fiji, but, you know, probably, it, it probably runs in their blood, so eventually, Manfred will probably be able to get the power to do more stuff, I mean, but for now, it's just seeing ghosts, so I'm very interested to see where that goes as well. Also, interestingly enough, his relationship with Creek, uh, multiple things. It doesn't seem like it's just her dad. It seems like her brother is super protective, too. And it's like, but why? Like, Connor, I guess I get it. It's like, I don't want you to be around men for, yeah, I saw him coming out of a strip club. It's like, yeah, he was looking for someone, bro. And then constantly throughout the episode, he's following her around and stuff like that. Almost getting himself killed by the succubus and everything. So it's like... I still want to know why the dad hates Manfred as much as he does. Like, yes, there's a whole scam artist angle, but, like, there's so much more to this than that. Like, it seems like he doesn't want her dating anyone. So it might be a situation, like, I kind of brought up last episode. That there's definitely more to Creek that we don't know. Maybe it's a situation as she's getting older, she's turning more, like, she's more inclined to reach her supernatural potential or whatever. So maybe that's what the dad's worried about. Like, he doesn't... I don't know, or maybe he has know something about Manfred and his family. Like maybe he looked it up and knows exactly who. Much like Lemuel, maybe he knows something about Manfred's family or something like that. Maybe it's a situation that we don't know about, like some weird situation, like it's like a blood feud between his family and Zelda's family. I don't know. I mean, not Zelda's family. Uh, Creek's family is what I mean. Like I don't know. Maybe something like that. Maybe nothing at all. I'm still so interested to find out what that's all about. Also, I loved how Manfred uh, handled that situation in the strip club. The guy, he touched her, he's like, oh, I'm sorry. And the guy's like, what are you doing touching my lady, essentially? He's like, I thought I, I thought she was my ex, Trish. I just, she's been going five years now. You see, you see Creek in the background, like, wait, what? Oh, like, it's, he's such a good card artist. It's like, well, it, it helps, uh, you know, his family being who they are and everything. And then the guy being, like, put his hand on Manfred's shoulder. It's okay, bro. I, under, I know where you're coming from, but you got to move on. I was like, that worked out beautifully. Also, we got a little more insight in this episode to um, Olivia and like how she operates and everything. For one, we kind of find out that she's actually a hired gun. That's interesting. Like, in this episode, she ended up um, targeting a guy. Like, it seems like she's more. She takes specific. Tar I mean, granted, this is just one example of her job, but it seemed like it was a situation of like this guy ran a scheme and he took every this her client's money, everything, and that entailed took his life, his home, his wife, just, like, his family, so, like, this was everything, so, I don't know if it's always something clear-cut like that, you know, she probably has, like, I mean, so far, we don't know, like, how far she's willing to go, like, what clientele she really introduces, is it people who've been victimized like that, or is it just someone that wants anyone dead, I'm, you know, we don't know what her standards are, like, you know, where she'll fall in the whole situation. But it also seems like she probably has a system of making everything look like a suicide or something. Or maybe like some illness or something. Because she had the guy take a pill and he died, so. Wigs and stuff. When she was handing Fiji a dress and everything, she had those wigs and stuff. I was like, what is up with that? And now it's kind of makes sense why she's got all that, that huge arsenal of hers as well. But a big part of this episode, too, was also finding out more about her family situation. Because a guy had hired her... Her dad had hired a guy to follow her around. And then we finally learned the truth. Because you could tell, like, it really pissed her off. Because her dad, like, he was like, your dad just wants to get in contact with you. He misses you. He just wants to know how you are. And you see, like, how much it affected Olivia. Because Olivia's very stoic and just kind of like, no, it seems like nothing. Everything kind of rolls off the show. It doesn't feel like anything bothers her. But then, like, she started almost crying. And then, like, Lemuel kind of grabs her and kind of saps her energy. It's like... I guess he's kind of like her emotional buffer. It's like her way of not being drowned in her own emotions. Like, just the anger and sadness she felt. Like, it, it probably reminded her of everything else that's involved with the situation. Which, I mean, we ended up finding out that basically her dad, never around. Then he ended up leaving her with her mom, who had a pill addiction. He cut her off. And then he wasn't there to suffer the wrath of that. But she was, so apparently he, she, her not even her mom, but a lady he was mar married to sold her off, I mean, sold her off to guys to kind of feed her pill addiction, which Olivia basically puts it that all those guys are dead now. I am curious about the woman she was married to, 
I mean, her, her dad was married to. Also, what about her mom? I would assume, like, her mom's probably dead since that never came up in the conversation. She probably died when Olivia was pretty young, but, um, her dad never cared then. It's like, why do you care now? It's like, holy crap, like, because I was wondering, like, what could she be running from? Like, her dad, is he, like, some, like, I don't know, to the fact is that he would hire people like that kind of makes, I mean, to be fair, it was just a guy to kind of take photos of her and just kind of follow her around. Um, it wasn't like some armored dude that's like stacked with weapons come to retrieve her. I mean, granted, that could always be the next step, but it's understandable why she would have that reaction. And Lemuel's there to kind of buff her out. And he's like, are you? And she's like, I'm fine. You know, it's like he's there to kind of help take that pain away. You know, I guess another. Yeah, it's just it's. I don't know, man. That situation is even more messed up than I thought it was. I thought it was just like, or, or her dad was a very bad man. I mean, to a certain extent, I guess he is. I mean, granted, he's always away, so there's always that business angle. Like, oh, he's a businessman. Like, kind of what I was thinking, like, oh, maybe he's a mafia dude or something. Um, be kind of interesting if we end up finding out that Hightower might be that same person. That might be what they decide to do with that twist of making it so. Something like that. Maybe nothing, end up, maybe it won't be like that at all. But I think that'd probably be what the twist would be about is like, Olivia's being hunted by her dad and that same person that's hunting Manfred. And there's also that conversation Olivia had with Lemuel near the end of the episode basically being like, you saved me. So it's like, does she mean like, like saved him, saved them in the sense of like they've been together for a while because he came and rescued her a long time ago? Or is it a sense of like, since they crossed paths like fairly recently and they hit it off and he's been the one to kind of take her pain away he saved her i'm curious like making her not feel as alone type of thing i'm curious like what that exactly meant maybe it's a combination of all three you know um another part of this episode is it's, it's just kind of an interesting bit of dialogue between joe and his partner and it kind of got me thinking about sort of because his partner's like oh you you know you can't oh wait you you went all you revealed yourself He's like, well, Joe was like, I had to, like, you know, towns over Roman vampires. It's like, you will expose us both. And that moment, I was like, oh, so I thought you were human, but apparently you're something else entirely. So that's kind of interesting. Like, so it's not even just about Joe exposing himself. It's also about exposing him. But it was also like a combination of like the fact is that he's like, you know, it could expose us. And the fact is that later on, he's like, oh, this whole veil situation. It's like, what if it means that, you know, other people lose control you know, of their nature, and, like, what if I do the same thing, what if I kind of give in to mine, and I'm like, oh, because at first I was like, okay, so are you both fallen angels, is that what that's all about, and then immediately my brain goes, the fact is that you worried about giving in to your nature makes me think you're something else, so maybe something else entirely, like another spectrum of the supernatural, but then my head starts thinking, well, what would be another spectrum to an angel, and I'm like, a demon, you know, so maybe that's why Joe is a fallen angel because of what the fact is he had a relationship with a demon and that like it's like they they look past who they were and they fell in love. And maybe that's what got them in the particular situation that they're in. So but then be, be fair, maybe there's something else entirely that he is. But I think that'd be kind of interesting considering the fact is that it also brought up is like they might be looking for. So it's like maybe that means angels are hunting them down because of the fact is because of their relationship. It's like, oh, your relationship is an abomination or something like that. I don't know. That That's immediately where my mind went. So. Also, I'm curious to know what your mind sets about that whole situation. Do let me know in the comments down below what you think that might be about. And then finally, another thing in this episode dealt with Bobo and uh, Fiji. Um, Bobo wanted to deal with the whole Peter thing, but you know Fiji was like, no, because you're going to draw too much attention. Obviously, she wants Bobo to stay safe, so she knows if Bobo goes after like the Sons of Lucifer, then it's going to trail back to him and just go and get police involved too and Bobo might get hurt and all that so obviously she cares about him and wants him to be safe they even go on a well they have a kind of a date set up to a certain extent it's more like a oh come over to my place and have dinner but Bobo goes home and his place is wrecked so but there was an interesting conversation when he went to that um when he went to go track down those other sons of Lucifer and he ended up talking to him and they were like, yeah, you turned your back on. So I was like, wait a minute. So there's, is that alluding to the fact is that Bobo used to be a son of Lucifer or, you know, cause that starts making me think because obviously everyone has them set as being like some white supremacist group, which then kind of breaks, makes my brain go, 
maybe there's more to them than that. Maybe it's not even just like a racist thing. Maybe it's a human or supernatural thing. Because they were like, yeah, you got the nerve to be running. Like, I think they were specifically talking about the fact that, that he lived at midnight. You're around all these midnighters. So what if it's supernatural that they have a problem with? Maybe they're racist too. But at the same time, I mean, I guess you could argue that's kind of like the truest form of racism right there. Not even just the color of someone's skin, but also the fact is of what they are. So, I don't know. I am curious, like, I mean, if that is the case, did Aubrey not know? Because she was, like, scared to tell Bobo that she was all, like, she was previously married, you know, to Peter. So it's like, huh. Because it might seem, because it's like, why did Peter go so hard after Bobo? Like, even going as far as killing that, um, sheriff just for letting Bobo out. So it's like, they must have history or something like that. Or, you know, it's just, that was just him going after Bobo because it's like, hey, you betrayed us, you know, so, not unless he still thinks Bobo is the one that killed Aubrey, which I don't, like, you know, like I said, I don't think either one of them did it, just because when Peter put on his mask at the end of, like, what was that, the second episode, it didn't seem like that was, like, the same mask that the person wore. I'm kind of wondering if it, the person who killed Aubrey is even, like, really a son of Lucifer, but I'm mean, just kind of have to wait and see whether anything comes of that, but it's so interesting because it then begs the question, what made him decide, why is he at midnight? What made him decide to kind of change his mind? And does any of that have to do with that thing that's underneath his like vehicle? He parked, because they hid his house, and the first thing he did was run outside to check on that locked, like, whatever that is, shelter or whatever it is he has uh, underground. So immediately my brain goes, like, is that supposed to be some kind of weaponry? That's what I'm starting to think. What if Sons of Lucifer are aiming to wipe out Midnight and Bobo ran away with the only weapon, the only means to do that, and he's hiding it away from them? Maybe that this that's what this is all about, too. I don't know. I'm just kind of throwing that out there. It's a very interesting episode with some interesting developments. Not just only with the whole succubus thing, but also just everyone else's stories too. So I'm very interested to see where this all goes in the next episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.